My name is Sinitlan Changwenya and I'm a student from University of Johannesburg. I am currently doing my honours in Journalism Studies. And I am Sinigo Zolo, an honours film and television student at the University of Johannesburg. Hey, I'm in a very lonely student house. Normally I live with six girls, but now there's just three of us and the chaos has really died down over the few days. I'm currently in isolation with my extended family who came uh, all the way from the Eastern Cape, which is thousands of kilometers to come and join me in celebrating my graduation. Um, because of COVID-19, they currently scrapped, but you'll hear later, uh, I mean, you'll find out more about this later on. Tell us, uh, Caroline and Emily, about the lockdown situation on your part of the world. My name is Emily, and I'm living about a half hour outside of Toronto, Canada. And it's been challenging to adjust to being home with my family all the time, to adjust to doing schoolwork from home and not being able to go out whenever I want, wherever I want. I live about 50 minutes north of Toronto right now um, at my parents' house with my siblings. I usually would be living in Toronto to go to Ryerson because it's right in the center of Toronto, but I moved home for now to be more comfortable and have more space and save some money. Okay, um, we are not alone today. I'm not alone today. I have my co-hosts with me and I'll just give them this opportunity to introduce themselves. Um, let me start with Ravi. Hello, Snen Chan Chav. I'm, I'm Rabelani Nevtaru and I'm locked up in Limpopo. Hi, I'm Tracy Ekopit and I'm locked down in Johannesburg, Gauteng. Hello, my name is Lira Tungwa Sheng and I am locked up in Limpopo. Hi everyone, my name is Tabi Lesefala and I am locked up in Polokwani, Limpopo. Coming up, we share details about our daily lives and you find out how my graduation resulted in my family being stuck in Johannesburg. And also we have a series of international film award-winning short films that our students from the University of Johannesburg have prepared for the UJ and Ryerson Global Campus Project. All right, so we'll start off by hearing from Anna. She is a fellow student at the university and she's an honor student in film and television. She'll be telling us about her experience during this lockdown. Hello everyone. I would just like to show you a few clips of what my family and I have been getting up to during this isolation period. I would also like to encourage you to stay strong, be positive, um, stay safe, and some of the things that we've been doing, we've been doing a lot of exercise, which has been really uplifting to us and has kept us going. Even my gran, um, she's been walking up and down the driveway. And we've been trying to be creative. We've been learning um, new card games. So I just encourage you to keep going. And um, during this time, I know that I've gotten to know my family a lot more. And I hope that you all have as well. Um, so I think that's definitely a positive out of this whole experience. Wow, that looks like a very happy experience at home with Anna, for Anna. Um, but can you just tell me, is it always like this when you're at home? Well, um, I think we're lucky enough that, I mean, everyone needs their own space sometimes. 
And so I think we're just lucky enough that, you know, everyone has their own room. Everyone has a place to go if the tensions do build a bit. Um, so, yeah, I think we're just trying to stay positive um, and trying to, I mean, we're learning more about each other and stay positive. So, yeah, we do have the luxury of having our own rooms and being able to just go have a walk in the garden if, you know, someone's you know, not getting on with someone else. But well, while that's her reality, we have a fellow student, Narato Mutuku, who's experiencing a completely different situation. And this is what she has to say. Greetings to the house, Edlash. This is Lerato, and I'll be sharing with you guys um, most of the difficulties and challenges I experienced in the face of this pandemic, especially in terms of academics. So um, the main difficulty so far has been access to resources and materials, especially since I don't have a computer. Um, having to rely on your cell phone is a problem because to open materials, you're going to need um, certain apps, your PowerPoint, your Word. Yeah, and I don't have those apps on my cell phone. So as a problem, especially also when it comes to real work, because what I've been doing is I've been using my cell phone to search for information and then later then write it down so that's a challenge because obviously i'm not gonna submit written work so yeah that's a problem and also access to online learning <laughs> is a problem when your smartphone isn't so smart like mine because i always have difficulties enabling the microphone yeah visuals will be there but i won't be hearing anything so yeah that's a challenge yeah guys and also generally i think i have um anxiety of some sort or maybe i'm paranoid i don't know but yeah so i've remained here on campus residence so guys i don't know breathing on its own proves to be a challenge and just going to a kitchen i don't know i'm always really wondering i don't know what i'm what i'm gonna find there Maybe if someone was there and left Corona, also going to the laundry room also proves to be a challenge because, yeah, I don't know who have been there. We have touched Corona and left it there. Yeah. And another thing is I'm running out of groceries, so eventually I'm going to have to go and do grocery shopping. I don't know. I'm scared. I don't know. To me, it's like I'm, I'll be going out of there looking for Corona. So the struggle is real, guys. As you can see, I don't even have anyone to hold my phone for me. It's Narato Muduku, who's experiencing a completely different situation. And she literally lives just down the road. She lives on campus. Now, the strange thing about this whole, whole situation is that her and I have not even had any form of physical um, communication or contact with her. Um, we can't even visit each other. So I know at the moment the concern is on mental health. So I want to know from Emily and Caroline, what are your thoughts on mental health and what do you think students are going through mentally at the moment? The virus has been very stressful for students. Uh, we're worried about not only possibly contracting COVID, but we're worried about what the world will look like when all of this is over. Mm -hmm. I agree. I'm graduating this year. So um, right now I have a part time job that I haven't really been getting shifts at lately because um, it's only essential employees going in. And I know Emily would be looking for a summer internship at this point. Um, thankfully, our school Ryerson has services like counseling for mental health um, and career advising, which would be helpful in this situation. We also have a student relief fund that offers money to students who are concerned about making ends meet because they're out of work. Psychological well-being is exactly what honest student Tiamo Dikobe is worried about and she admits that she is very frightened. Well, for me, the most important thing is getting my mind right and unfortunately, I am so not winning in that department. I find doing my assignments as well as all the work that is required from home very challenging because one, it is always, and I mean always noisy in Soweto, and two, I cannot keep in regular contact with all my group members due to the fact that some are in um, geographical areas with poor 
um, connectivity as well as constant load shedding adding to that which makes it even more challenging to be productive I am worried about the fact that our future cities project requires us to go out and about and two we need to find um, internships and just like job hunting it is so hectic and as we all know it is locked down we cannot go out and about to find those internships and I understand that we can always um, send emails to different organizations but the reality is the fact that they just do not respond. I can really relate with what Tiamo is going through. Um, just to remind you, you are watching a broadcast between the University of Johannesburg and Ryerson University for the Global Campus Project. I will now hand over the reins to my fellow co-hosts, Rabe and Tracy. I am Rabirani, normally called Lady Rabs and you are watching a special broadcast produced by students all over the world. My co-presenter for this part of the show is Tracy Ikopit. Hello, Tracy. Thank you, Rave. Every year, the University of Johannesburg Journalism, Film and Television Honor students decide on a theme for their documentary films that will be featured in today's special broadcast. Last year, the theme was The Speech of Freedom. Let's take a look at a short film called Fragmented that won one of our university's annual FLAIR awards. My name is Neon Hasego. I'm a first year master's student at the University of Johannesburg. I lived in Soweto from birth till 2004. I moved to Alexandra. So I'm living in Alex for quite some time. Growing up, I've always known that I do not necessarily identify as like societal norms of what a boy should act like. So I never really played sports. Uh, yeah, I loved making things. So I would play with dolls, I designed things with dolls. And that's sort of, yeah, that's sort of how I grew up. So growing up in school, the sports field was a very difficult space for me to engage with, you know, and yeah, just feeling like you don't belong there. I never really knew what bathroom to go to, you know, do I go to the boys' bathroom or the girls' bathroom, and that is a nightmare for me sometimes. So some of the challenges I face with uh, coming from Alexandra as, as a queer body and then I think the communities are not willing, they're not willing to understand life beyond their understanding. It's, it's challenging, I guess, to, to not really fit in into your community. My mother's always known that I was different and she's always embraced this difference. But I think to a certain degree there was still there were certain expectations, you know. I think she was expecting me to maybe outgrow, you know, she was expecting this to be a face. And I remember the day you know, that's when I'm like, I know that you're away from me, I'm gay, but in the same, you know, but I feel like you have certain expectations. And I'm very aware of these expectations. And I want you to understand that I can never live up to those. You know, it was quite, yeah, it was quite emotional. Because yeah, I had to come out when I was already out. Coming to university, I think I was given the platform to, to be able to express myself. It's a space that says, no, it's okay, just be yourself and know who you are. My artworks, uh, which are painting based, have always been contextualized around the notion of my body and its relationship to spaces. My art is literally just a place for me to just be myself. I was able to make, make peace with this person that I am. When I wear women's clothes, I feel, I feel more myself. Naomi is a trans-identifying woman, alter ego of mine, 
you know, so I, I, I like to consider her a manifestation of, of my true self. I first met Newell in first year, six years ago. I was intrigued because I, I thought I thought Newell was a girl and then I just found out like a few months later that born a male. I was getting ready and then Naomi popped in. She's gorgeous, she's gold. I need to be on her level. The only reason why Naomi comes out in spaces like galleries, for example, is because I feel that such spaces are more tolerant of her. I, I'm really just attempting to, to shift society's minds around gender. The times have proven to be very tough for a lot of people. And a lot of people are very, are so afraid over this lockdown and the coronavirus all over the place. And this um, causes people to be so intolerant and it causes a lot of bigotry. I wanted to just find out from you, Emily and um, Caroline, do you also have such issues going on that time? Yes, um, our Chinese community in Canada um, have definitely faced um, a change and they've faced some threats and violence, um, which is really sad uh, because of the virus. We've also had problems with um, domestic abuse calls going up in and around the city. Um, fortunately, we do have in Canada Kids Help Phone, which is a nonprofit organization, um, which is a helpline for children. And they've seen a massive increase in calls and texts since uh, all these lockdowns started just because of the increase of violence in people's homes where they should be safe. Yes, uh, I, w I just wanted to mention the increase of um, gender-based violence and as well domestic abuse because I think it, on the news they were talking about how they've, they've seen um, large numbers of children uh, getting, going to hospitals because of, they've been beaten by their parents and you know such situations and because people are taking out their frustrations um, physically on their family members. So it's, it's quite a sad um, situation. Yeah, there's a lot of those. I also read a story of a woman who was saying that a husband is using her as a punching bag due to the frustrations that are happening due to the lockdown. So there is a lot of gender-based violence reports being um, reported to the police. So we need to get this thing, the cure found as soon as possible to get this thing cleared. Thank you. So on the line, we have Alex Tolo who is a University of Johannesburg film and television honors student who has found a very interesting way to deal with his anxiety during this time of lockdown. Hello, Alex. I understand hey. you have something exciting to say. What is it that you are busy with? Hey, guys, and thank you so much for having me. Well, I found, well, I was browsing through because I was bored the other day, and then I found an, an, a challenge for writers to write a script in 14 days, and each day there's an activity that you need to do. So, yeah, that's what I'm using to try and, you know, keep my mind out of the anxiety. So, Alex, which day are you on currently? Right now, I'm on day four. I'm on day four, yeah. I still need to go with my day five and then I can be able to, you know, start going. <laughs> okay. So what made you choose these, this challenge? What was it that motivated um, you to do this 14-day writing challenge? Okay. What motivated me was very... Easy. Um, during this time, I haven't, I've been struggling to write. I've been struggling to be creative. And then I realized that it's actually not about creativity and it's about discipline. I have to keep on exercising my writing muscle more and more so that I can get better, so that creativity will have to follow after I've written the first draft. No matter how bad it is, I have to just keep on writing. So, yeah. Oh, I wanted to ask, are you able to share um, the genre and perhaps a synopsis of the film that you're writing? Well, yeah, I can definitely do that. It's a, it's a drama because that's what I write a lot drama. So it's about this young university guy who um, suffers a huge tragedy in his life and then he has to reevaluate his entire choices and then it, I, I'm trying to address something that um, our society doesn't really want to face which is 
um, male rape. And then it's something that I'm very passionate about because I've been reading a lot about those things online to see how society responds to those cases. So, yeah. That sounds interesting. Uh, I guess you're not bored during this lockdown. So you are not one of those that are looking forward for, uh, to the lockdown being f- finished, are you? <laughs> oh, don't get me wrong, you know, I love my space, you know, but, you know, I, I've, since, since this lockdown started, I've been struggling a lot because for me, people inspire me, crowds inspire me. So now to go from that space and then to just being in isolation, being alone at home with, you know, it's just a lot of, it's just a lot to handle. So I am looking forward to going out and then seeing people, you know, so that I can get some ideas because that's where like my creative juices flow, you know. So Alex, I wanted to ask, so lockdown is a very um, scary situation for most of us. A lot of us are anxiety ridden and depressed. So I just wanted to um, find out from you, is this not maybe a depressing um, genre or style of film that you've chosen to focus on? Is it not something that brings you down when you write um, such films? Um, that's a very good question. Um, one can argue that it is very sad, but then at the same time, you're like, who's going to give voices to the male, who, to the male victims of this um, situation? Because I find for me, the more I'm com- more comfortable writing something that um, makes me feel good, like when I have something to say to people. So as sad as it is, for me, this helps me distract, like, distract my mind from the sorry, um, from society, how, like, now, how we are living right now, because it's just too much for me, like, having a lot of people in one space for me, it drives my anxiety crazy, so being able to just focus on something else, on someone else's story, is able, it, able, it, it enables me to, you know, rejuvenate my creativity, because I'm trying to give a voice to the voiceless. Thank you, Alex, for joining us and telling us your story. It's um, uh, a very good initiative that you're doing. And we miss you. We miss school. And we can't wait to come back and meet up with everyone. So let's pray that this lockdown gets logged out very soon and we get to meet, meet each other very soon. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you guys for having me. Bye. Creativity has definitely become the answer for some of us trying to battle the coronavirus blues. While Alex is writing a film script, fellow honor student Asina Ndlovu has started writing a book. Um, for me, home is very quiet and peaceful, and my parents allow me the time and space to do what I'm supposed to do, as long as I'm done with my chores, of course. So I've been investing my time in writing, which is something I love doing. So besides schoolwork, I've been writing. So I always planned to write a book, but I didn't actually have the time to work on it because, you know, I had stuff to do. So now that I have like so much time, I thought, okay, this is the time that I can use to um, work on the book. So I started writing and I get my target was that I want to make this book a 30 page book because I don't want it to be too much or I don't want it to be too much. I just want it to be enough for like an ordinary teenage girl to read so 30 pages was my target so first I was like okay let my first target be 15 pages so I'll write every day until I get to 15 pages and then I'll see what to do next that's if I still have time so I've been writing every day I'm not forcing myself I just write whenever I want to or whenever I feel like it and because it has become a habit and I have so much time doing nothing, I almost just want to write all the time. So, so far I have 20 pages written and I'm really proud of myself because I've exceeded my goal because my first goal was like 15 pages. So that means now I only have like 10 pages to go to reach the 30 page target, then I'm, I'll be done. And I've also been taking pictures of like a page that I've written and then I send it to like my family and friends and they read it and they really like it and their comments actually motivate me to keep going on. I have some people who have even referred me to some authors 
they they referred me to an author in ta- that's uh, just around town that I can speak to if I want to get the book published. So I'm really happy. I'm actually happy that I had this 21 days because I feel like this was an opportunity for me to work on my book. So, yeah. And I'm really hoping that I get it done and get it published soon. But I'm just going as far as I can. I'm not, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself because I also still have schoolwork to do. But so far, I'm just glad of what I have achieved because even if this lockdown was to end, then I'll... I'll have something like some I've done something that I'm really proud of during this lockdown. There are also lighter moments during life in lockdown. We look at the story of Simnihi Wekolo, who recently graduated, and her grandmother, affectionately known as Ugogo, and her extended family traveled more than a thousand kilometers to be with her. But now, weeks later, this has proven to be a true test to family bonds. Simnikiwe's story is wonderful, but due to a poor connection, it is mostly audio with still photos. So my family is from the Eastern Cape, Matadiela, and I'm like the, the last granddaughter who is graduating. So my granny was very proud that we're all here now and the last granddaughter, all my kids have graduated. So she decided, ah, the whole family has to come up for this one. So we're all here for the graduation. The preparations are done on the day things are going on and we hear about the coronavirus, which was a bit of a stress, but we're like, okay. So we were also still excited and we went to the graduation and everyone decided to Day for the week afterwards. Little did we know that that very same week everything was gonna close and now everyone was gonna be stuck in the house. Oh uh, that was a that was that's when the mess began, actually, to be honest. I, okay, being with the family was nice for the first week because uh there were planned activities we could go out we don't have to be stuck with each other the whole time and then uh as time proceeded then we we got forced to be with each other we're just like a pack of noodles in one place uh and we can't get out i have to do my school work and i like to work in silence but there's people there's kids playing around and you'll be working for five minutes and then someone's gonna be like oh you need to go make food for let's say ukoko that's my granny my biggest problem is cooking like i do not like cooking at all so now because there's lots of people and the other people are young you can't expect them or the others are too old so they don't expect to be working like they don't expect cooking to be their responsibility so it becomes a yo you've got to do the cooking otherwise you won't eat if you don't cook then it's, it becomes a but there are kids in the house why don't you cook oh god you do you expect god cook I'm like no I don't but like I didn't expect to be cooking every day not only cooking every day but cooking for seven people that's the thing because normally you'll just wake up and you'll make whatever quick meal you can make but now there's like seven people so now you need to make sure there's enough for everyone it's not just cooking basic cooking it's oh my it's it's massive it's things that I'm just not used to, so it just becomes too much for me because, no, mm-mm, I didn't sign up for it. Yeah, this has been a time to realize that relationships are very important and we really need to find ways of revol- resolving conflicts between us and make sure that we stay focused so that at the end of this lockdown, we don't find families that don't talk to each other anymore. And Caroline and Emily, can you relate? Do you have such stories of family tension there in Toronto where you are? I definitely do. Um, It's been very challenging to adjust 
uh, with everyone being home together. I live in a house with four people and one dog, so it gets a little bit loud, a little bit chaotic at times. And my family has already had a couple of arguments because we're getting on each other's nerves. But we also recognize how fortunate we are to be safe at home together. And at the end of the day, I'm glad that I can be safe here with my parents and my sister because we do have fun as well. I can relate, Emily, and I'm actually gonna uh, one up you. I have five people here and one dog, so I can I know what you mean. Um, but overall, I would say I've been enjoying it so far because we've been like sometimes we don't get to spend time together with our hectic lives, so we've actually been playing a lot of board games and um, enjoying each other's company. But we do have quite a few little arguments. Um, for example, we try to plan not all having Zoom meetings at the same time because our internet cannot handle it. Um, so little things like that that we're picking at each other, but other than that, it's been okay. A reminder that you are watching a special broadcast, a collaboration between the University of Johannesburg and the Ryerson University Global Campus Project. The pandemic has not made things any easier on students, not knowing what will happen. For example, the academic work or being stuck in one place, which has made us very anxious and leading to depression. As the lockdown was an unexpected move, most of us are left feeling stuck with no direction. This can be tough on our psychological, emotional, and social well-being. Now, as if the pandemic blues are not enough, Zinklengwenya was marked right before the lockdown, losing her phone. We managed to connect with her, but unfortunately, we could not record a video. I was attacked and um, I was robbed of my um, resources, my school resources and my cell phone as well. So he approached me from Norway and then when I just raised my head to, to see him and then there was a car that was passing off. So he just grabbed, uh, twisted my arm, grabbed the phone and then took the stuff that I had. And then when, I, when he ran off, when I was tra uh, tracking the direction, then there was a car that just arrived and they opened, the guy who was inside, with a black t-shirt, opened the door. When he opened the door, he seemed to be having a, to be carrying a gun. And then he kind of threatened me, signaled me to keep quiet because um, if I dare scream, he was probably gonna pull the trigger. And the guy got into the car and then it, it, it drove off. But the whole thing, I think when we go back to campus, I'll go to PsychEd to just have counseling and talk to a professional because I feel like that really affected um, affected me emotionally. Sometimes I would, um, recently before, I would just dream of the incident repeating, happening, um, and concentration as well, because I will just have some panic attacks out of the blue. Um, I can't say I'm really good, because being at home is really limiting me in terms of being, in terms of uh, productivity, Academically, I can't really um, do much. I um, I stay in an RDP house and uh, with my family. It's a family of um, seven, so that's that's the setting at home. And we don't really there isn't much of internet access. When I buy data, I have to go to a spaza shop. Um, so that's the kind of a setting. It's not really um, a, a place where you can access most of the resources uh, to do proper work. And we have a library. A library is quite like 15 minutes walk from my house, but then it's also closed because of the lockdown. I'll just keep asking for money, asking for money. How much did we give you the 20 rand? It's finished, you have to buy, you need to buy data because I'm gonna attend an online. They don't understand the online class things. You see now I'm in my room, close the door, I just so keep working and what are you doing on the phone? I'm, I'm, I'm with my lecturer. Like I said, that I'm the first one to go to varsity. Some things for, to them, they don't understand. So I'm the first one to finish my trick and go to varsity. So sometimes when, even when I'm using my laptop, sometimes they won't understand the stuff that I'm doing. Why do I need to always be on my phone? They feel like um, I'm, it's, it's stealing the family time, you know? It's more like I'm I'm putting I'm always I'm isolating myself, and if I'm attending or if I keep buy, keep asking for money to buy data because I need to keep updated to see the messages in the group if um, by any chance there's messages that I, I need to keep informed you know, 
they don't understand because they'll be like, no, but then the schools, the schools are closed. And those online things, you appear as if you are lying because they don't know the stuff technologically. Uh, they are not well informed. They don't believe that there's more like a phone now because now when they were looking into the room, they see your face on the screen on the phone and then I'm talking to you. It's more like, okay, it's a physical, something that they can see, proof. Just say, okay, Vele, she's talking to the lecturer. But then if you say it by word, sometimes it's more like you, you, you're really making up a story. There's obviously much more tension when so many people are so close together for such a long period of time. So what do you do when you're feeling down? I read, unfortunately, the books that I've brought um, from Rares, because I brought a few um, self-help and business books. Unfortunately, I'm not really a fan of fiction, fiction novels. So um, I mostly read. Some students have found ways to keep their emotional, psychological, and social well-being normal and ensure that the anxiety does not peak. An honor student, Naledi Devia, talks about how she has had to overcome anxiety and depression during this trying time. When I first felt that feeling, um, I would just not do anything the whole day. Um, I would just wake up, do nothing, wake up at like odd hours, um, or I'd sleep at odd hours, like maybe sleep at like four or five in the morning, doing nothing, um, and then wake up at like 12, one, midday, um, and then just like follow a cycle for like three to four days, like wake up, make food, maybe get back into bed or just like lounge around watching Netflix the whole day. Um, and then sort of like it, it came to a point where I was like, okay, no, I can't do this. I actually have schoolwork to do, number one. And number two, um, I can't wallow in my sadness for forever because who knows how long we're going to be on lockdown. So then I decided, okay, no, let me just be, let me just be productive um, every day, let me like maybe spend a few, like maybe like two to three hours doing some schoolwork, um, an hour or so, maybe playing with my camera sometimes, um, uh, maybe like doing some editing, uh, or maybe going outside, um, taking pictures, taking some videos, putting them together, see what I can come up with. I'm reading a lot towards my research essay. Um, my topic is the representation of Winnie Mandela in Long Walk to Freedom and in the film Winnie. So, um, um, every day is different. Um, I think most days are, are, are better than some. Um, so I'm just trying to stay positive, uh, trying to find the, do things that I, that I like, that I love, um, that I know will make me feel great. Um, so yeah, in the beginning it was a struggle, but... I think now after the, the announcement of the of the uh, extended two weeks, I'm doing better. Um, even though it it it, it put a damper on me because I was like, oh, okay, we're gonna be here for another two weeks. But I know it's not just gonna be two weeks. I think every two weeks there's gonna be another announcement of another two weeks. Yeah, some days are definitely better than others. Um, I think some days I'll be like, okay, today's a very productive day. I'm going to do schoolwork and then I'm going to, I'm going to do a lot of schoolwork. And then by the time it's like six o'clock, I'm just going to make dinner or at times where I'll wake up and I'm just like, okay, no, today feels like a day to do nothing. I'm just going to do nothing the whole day. Just going to sleep or sleep or sit in a, in a blanket and just Netflix the whole day. So it depends. Like <laughs> it just depends what I'm feeling that day. And I think, and I think one thing that I've, I've realized is my motto for like this whole lockdown period has been there's time to do everything. So there's a lot of time to do a lot. And you've talked about changing your relationship with your phone. I felt like, I actually felt like physically I couldn't hold my phone for any longer. Like I would put it down and then like every five minutes, like I'd want to pick it back up again, but then I'd feel like that exhaustion in my hand again. Like I'd literally feel like there was a dent in my hand because I was holding my phone for so long. And iPhone has this feature where you can actually check how much screen time, um, it tells you screen time, screen on, and then it tells you screen off. So screen on would be like 11, 12 hours. 
and then screen off would be something like an hour to two hours and I'm like wow I'm actually spending this much time on my phone and I would just get tired of it like I would try to maybe like do what I was doing on my phone on my laptop but it wouldn't be the same and then also like people would call me because I think people feel like just because we're in lockdown and like you know everybody's like at home well let me just like call people um let me just call people whenever I can and now for some good news that came our way during this lockdown. South Africa's After Film School has announced three 2019 graduation films as candidates to compete for the most prestigious awards on the motion picture calendar. It is awarded by Student Academy Awards in an annual competition for both college and university filmmakers. One of the films considered for student Oscars was edited by one of our show hosts, Simnikiwe Tolo. We will take a look at the film and we will explain the name of the film Spina Diadeng afterwards. Spinning Spina is weird. We told you we got to see more to look shiny. But I feel like we're going to be much, we're much, we're much. Masangena mahomusha makwana ya slicer Except in a lana ma baiza So tatil in saiza Ya pagama na ma wenza ni baba ti saiza She went down on her knees in front of me after I was spinning and she just started hitting my legs and saying prayers and things here in front of me and she said, you are Faiki Kunene. One Friday afternoon, here comes um, the cops. Um, Ms. Shamaine, do you know your son is into Kumsaras and your son is spinning on the road? Spinning is a car <laughs> it's a lifestyle. <laughs> Congratulations, Simi Kiretolo, the editor of Spina Diadem, which is roughly translated as Spin That Thing, which relates to locals spinning their cars and doing stunts with their cars. As part of the special project with the Rising University, students were told to produce short films under the theme Future Cities. The film Future Cities talks about how Johannesburg has evolved and changed over time. The gold, which was the main reason for Joburg's existence and essence. But it has come to an end. So what does this mean for the future of Johannesburg? Can we really envision a city without it? Each group has chosen to focus on an individual who will be their main character. The individuals will be telling the stories of normal people. The stories will not only focus on the change, the natural disasters that has occurred over time due to mining, but it will also look at the positive side that mine has brought and what the future holds. Hi, my name is Mashutum Pasele, and everyone knows me as Mash. I mean, I don't know if I should lie or I should tell the truth, but in all honesty, I was just a young uh, black woman in a big city, and it required a lot of money to sustain the kind of lifestyle that I had. Mm. cerebral palsy that their hair were taken by this scientist mm -hmm. they found lead they found arsenic they found sulfur they found cadmium they found uh, uh, uranium they found copper in their DNA 
So you could see that the cause of their deformity is because of this mine dam. They need us to vacate this place. Okay. They are going to eradicate the houses. So then we decided as a community here, which we are not going anywhere because we don't even know where are we going to stay from here. We are not working at the moment. So we will stay. Even that Sibani old man, it wanted to eradicate the house. But we spoke to our council. We asked him, how about maybe you can go to the mine, ask them, maybe they can give us a chance for us to stay here because we are keeping their houses safe at the moment. Foreigners started coming in, started getting dirty, the white people started moving out and all of that. It's changed in a lot of ways where I can actually teach other people how to do what I do, especially in my community. I'm uplifting from smoking drugs, drinking alcohol in parks. Partner Josie is actually a project where we put out murals and uplift the community. They're like, it, and that's our show for today thank you so much bye thank you so much to our host emily and caroline from ryerson university thank you university of johannesburg bye thank you guys stay safe this was a special broadcast in collaboration of Rice in University and us here at University of Johannesburg. Wishing you all well wherever you are, especially those in isolation. Stay well and safe. All right. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.